It should go without saying that giving your money to wealthy celebrities probably won't end well for whatever it is you think you want. Perhaps it's Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's whatever she sells, weird products like shoving things up in you and we, I don't know, whatever, whatever she's doing, I don't know, whatever. But you give money this really exp- for these really expensive products and what do you get? Probably overpriced garbage. But what about nonprofits? What about when celebrities come out and say, we are feminists and we are going to fight for people who have been abused? Please give us money. Uh, Do you think that they're going to use that money in such a way that will actually help people? Well, my friends, I believe you would be incorrect. Well, some of the money in this instance did go to helping victims of harassment. Times Up Charities, set up by celebrities as part of the Me Too movement, spent $1.4 million on salaries, $157,000 on conferences at luxury resorts, and just $312,000 helping victims of harassment. Absolutely stunning and brave. Thank you. Daily Mail says, Times Up, the organization set up to fight sexual harassment in the workplace, in the wake of the Me Too movement, spent the bulk of its donations on executive salaries and only a fraction on legal costs to help victims in its first year, records show. Tax filings show that the organization, which was founded by Hollywood celebrities and is made up from the Time's Up Foundation and Time's Up Now Inc., raised $3.6 million in 2018 in its first year of operation. However, less than 10% was spent on helping those women who have experienced harassment. Filings show $312,001 was spent on the legal defense fund, while $1.4 million was spent on salaries. And more than $157,000 was spent on conferences at luxury resorts, and a further $58,000 was spent on travel. The organization brought in Hollywood heavyweights during the early days of its operation with Reese Witherspoon, Amy Schumer, and Brie Larson holding positions on its board. Bravo. You know, listen, listen, my friends. They're celebrities. We're going to have to pay them a lot of money to get them on board. And that means we're not really going to be help, be be a a good help to people who are really victims of harassment and need legal defense. But listen, you know, got to hire those celebrities. So, uh, yeah, we want to put the names on the books, I guess. So they, they show you a bunch of photos. They say the tax filings details the mission of Time's Up now as being to promote safe, fair, and dignified work for women of all kinds. We work to make sure that women are free from harassment and other forms of discrimination on the job, have equal opportunity for economic security, and can achieve the highest positions of power wherever they work. But huge amounts were spent on executive salaries instead of legal support. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're evangelizing, okay? They said to promote. Many of you may know this because I've talked about this issue before. I used to work for, uh, I worked for several nonprofits doing fundraising. Let me tell you the clever wordplay they use to justify taking your money and spending it on whatever they want. You might see someone say, hello, good sir. We are trying to save starving children. We're trying to save them. And you're going to be like, wow, okay, what do I got to do? Please give us your money. Well, in order to save the kids, they say people need to know this is, this is one of the most common things they do to take your money. How can we help the kids if no one knows that they need saving? And you're like, save them from what? That's not the point. We're saving them. So here's what happens. They take your money. They pay themselves and say, the fact that I'm talking to you right now is the outreach. Congratulations. By you giving me money, I'll keep talking to people. Now, look, to be reasonable... There is some merit in that. You know, if people don't know a problem exists, they can't solve it. And if people are directly funding the salaries of those who are doing the fundraising by like people going out and talking to people, you are evangelizing and spreading that idea. But when people think they're donating to a cause that's going to fight specifically for something like helping women who have been victims of harassment and you barely do that, that's when we, that's when you get one of these. Well, it's a, it's a typical charity. It's what most of them do. They'll say, we're here to fight for, you know, for the environment. Well, what that means is the fight is on multiple fronts. The first step is telling people. That's always their excuse. They're paying themselves salaries and saying it's all a part of the cause. Because if we weren't doing this, no one would know about it, right? They say Lisa Borders was recruited to head Time's Up, but only spent four months at the organization after her 36-year-old son was accused of misconduct. <laughs> wow, of misconduct himself. 
Nevertheless, the CEO managed to pull in $342,000 for her salary. She was there for four months. They were going to pay her a million dollars. No joke. The chief marketing officer, Rachel Terrace, drew a salary of $295,000 for her efforts during the organization's first year. And treasurer Rebecca Goldman drew a salary of $255,000. Listen, I'm not convinced anybody who donated actually cares. I really don't. They're probably like, I'm more than happy to donate to empower strong women's. So there you go. They complain about Trump's charities and all that stuff. If people want to give money to Trump, I don't care. If people want to give money to Time's Up, fine, whatever, I don't care. They say, tax filings detail how 3,000 individuals were helped by the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund between January and June 18th at a cost of $1.7 million. But most of the defense fund money came from grants that had been made to the Women's Law Center, according to the New York Post. Only a small proportion came from the Time's Up organization, with Time's Up Foundation donating 132000 to the fund and Time's Up Now, the lobbying end of the charity, handing over 179000 And that brings me to the next point. Lobbying. We are going to help these women by lobbying for social justice law. Oh, that's what it is. They'll tell you they're fighting for one thing, but they're fighting for a broad cause. I'll give you an example. Refuse fascism. Now, it's been a while since I covered refuse fascism as an organization, but my understanding is that they were founded by the revolutionary communists. That's the game. They're going to say we're refusing fascism by promoting communism. Great. Two bad authoritarian systems that I don't want. I guess the commies like it, though. That's what happens. People donate thinking that they're going to oppose fascism when in reality they're supporting authoritarian communism. That's what you get from all of this. You think you're donating to the salary of some woman who's going to be like, we must stop harassment. What they'll do is they'll say, listen, women's struggles is really just everyone's struggles. And therefore, we must fight for, you know, insert critical race theory cause or, you know, far leftist identitarian cause. It's all interconnected, they will say. Or they'll say something like, we're fighting for the rights of, you know, BIPOC women or BAME women or whatever. It allows them to use your money as they see fit while using a strong cause to create a sense of urgency, as they call it, so they can raise money. One of the principal, uh, one of the key elements of fundraising is what they call the sense of urgency. It's in sales, too. You got to tell people, if you don't buy it now, someone else will. What they do here is they say, cause is getting bad. And if you don't fight it now, it's going to get worse. That's why they need something like Time's Up. That's why they need something like Me Too. So they can say, remember in the news, you heard about that woman and that guy? That's right. Donate. If they came out and said, we want to fight for a cause to like, you know, pass some diversity and inclusivity law or whatever for businesses, you'll be like, "Eh, I'll do it later. But if you come out now and say, these women need your help, they're suing, they're going after these guys, and they're going to get them locked up. Then people donate, but then they go ahead and use that money as they see fit. They said the conferences where they spend a ton of money included a retreat to a luxury resort and spa in Ojai in June 2018, where a room for the night costs upwards of $400. Well, to be fair, $400 is a lot for, uh, you know, in general, but there's more expensive resorts than that. It, It is hefty, though, to be fair. Despite having been in existence six months, those at the conference struggled to decide what the organization's mission statement should be, according to one attendee who spoke to the New York Post. It later changed from let's clean up Hollywood to we're going to help all workers. Aside from the pricey conferences at country retreats, the organization details in its tax filings how it spent $288,000 on advertising and $940,000 on legal costs. A huge chunk of that, $719,000, went to Arnold and Porter K. Scholar, a law firm that frequently lobbies on Capitol Hill. Amazing. Listen, look, I want to be fair. Maybe they raised a bunch of money and they just didn't know what they're doing. That's fine, I guess. And like I said, I'm sure there's a lot of feminists who don't care they gave the money to them and, and you know, and that's it. If they're doing lobbying, it's not going to be uh, uh, tax deductible. But I think, look, here's the main point. Almost all charities do this. They, they claim to be fighting for a cause, but they're really just paying themselves. And a lot of people just feel good giving money because it's their excuse where they're like, well, I'm doing the right thing, I guess. If you want to give to a charity, if you want to give to a candidate, by all means, do it. People are donating to Trump because they like Trump and they don't care. They don't. But right now, uh, you know, Steve Bannon is going through this court case where they claim that he, you know, he and this other guy took money and then paid this guy a salary when they weren't supposed to. But I, I doubt anyone who donated to that project cares that the guy decided to pay himself. 
truth be told, dude said he wouldn't take a salary, and then he did. And they were like, don't tell anybody. That's at least the evidence we've seen so far. Does anybody care, though? Are there any victims? I'd say no. None. So listen, it's not the first time I've seen a story like this. Would I donate to Time's Up? No, because I prob- I, could, I can tell you, man, a bunch of these big nonprofits do exactly this. Many are more overt about it. Like, I'm not, you know, I, I can say that maybe Time's Up, they're just inexperienced, have no idea what they're doing. Okay, fine. That's fair, I suppose. Or they knew they were setting up a nonprofit. They were going to funnel all the money into salaries for themselves and then go, eh, there you go. We're done. We saw with Joe Biden's charity on cancer, right? It's one of the most common ways to clean money. You start a nonprofit, you take donations from somewhere, from someone, and you pay yourself a salary, and now the money is legal and taxed and all that stuff. If Time's Up is going to do whatever it does, like, they can do it, it's legal. And if people want to give them money, that's fine. Maybe you do. Okay, whatever. I'll just put it that way. It's tribalism, huh? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.